What is up? What is going on, David? SVA Baseball Card Collectors. And since I went through vintage, you know, what I do to figure out what to invest in, I figured I'd also do prospects as well. Now, I haven't gone prospecting lately, but a couple, uh, about a couple months ago, I was pretty heavy into it and doing a decent amount of research. Um, first and First and post, foremost, foremost and first. The sayings I'm terrible at. I I am horrific at sayings. I'm just gonna start making stuff up. I well I already do. So what I do is I what I suggest. All right, when you're starting off an investment and you don't want to do the vintage route, you want to see you want to invest in players that have, aren't in the majors and um, try to buy their first cards and their first autograph cards and um, reap the benefits. My suggestion would be start off with the team that you like. So as a Yankee fan, I would do the Yankees. As a Met fan, you wouldn't do that. Um, but you, you understand. So if you like the Cubs, you go take a look at them. Now, one way you can go about this is do a simple Google search and just go top prospects. That's all you have to do for the Cubs, the Rockies, whoever. There, try to get something. Take a look at the date as to when the article was written. That is important because you may be looking at something that was written in the beginning of the year. And now that it's the end of the year and most of the guys got hurt or whatever the case may be, just take a look at that and make sure, because some guys may have already, they're done. Or they've gone huge and they're big time prospects and they're not the 10th one anymore, they're like the second or first one. So that's one way to take a look at it. Another one is fan graphs. Um, I would suggest Fangraphs. Oh boy, car ain't doing too good, people. Fangraphs. It's a great tool to use to find out statistical information on minor league baseball players. Same thing as MILB, but there's the minor league. Uh, I think it's MILB.com, and that also will give you the stats to minor leaguers. Um, it is. <coughs> What I look at, all right, I like to go on fan grass. I like to look at the stats and see a couple of stats, things that stick out to me that I think are important. I'm gonna go back one second, I'm gonna go back. So you got the guys that you like on your team because I think you'll have a vested interest in them doing well. You can also invest in other guys. I'm not saying not to. I'm just saying I believe that it would be pretty cool to invest in guys and you can watch them grow up and they go to the majors and they become big and you become rich off them. That's how that works. <laughs> so you go to Fangraphs and they have a top 100 minor league list. And they did it back in, uh, I believe, February. And from there, I would look at the top guys, top five or ten guys, and take a look at their stats and compare. What now you have a baseline of how good, or you have a baseline of the stats, and I'm sure if you look at their top 10 guys and you look at their baseball card values, they're going to be pretty high. So you have a good idea of what percentages, um, how many home runs, how many doubles, on base percentage, and that stuff that guys who are not as far along those guys are probably doing it in double-A, triple-A, mostly triple-A, where these guys are single-A, <coughs> 1-A, double-A, they're going to be in that realm. That's where you want to start investing in them, if you can. Sometimes there's guys that are so hot that their cards are already crazy high, And but we'll, let's stick to what we're talking about. So now that you have an idea, you then go and look at your guy's stats um, on fan graphs they give the tool where they what they project this guy to be um, I don't take too much stock in, in 
to that. Um, I like to see, hopefully, there's statistics for a year or two. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just half a season because they were just drafted. So you got a small, um, you know, small data that you can use. I like a lot of data. So I like to invest in guys that have, a, you know, at least two years. So at least you can spot a trend. And what I look for is in younger players, 17, 18, 19, and maybe even 20, um, the home runs, I'm not as more consider I'm not as concerned as doubles. If they have a high, you know, high amount of doubles, they're gonna bulk up, they're gonna get bigger, they're gonna mature, and that should lead into more home runs. So I take a look at that. That's one of the key things. Home runs sell. So if a guy hits a ton of home runs, his card values will probably be higher than guys that don't. Um Statistics that I look for, home runs, doubles, on base percentage, and they also on fan graphs give you a K rate and a walk rate. The K rate I like to look at is below 20%. So 20, below 20% of their at-bats, they're striking out. And walk rate, I like to go for guys that are above 20%. So above 20% of the time, they're walking. And that will give you an indication of how well they control the strike zone when they're hitting. So these guys, if they're striking out all the time, that means they're not making contact. Um, if they're not walking either, they're probably, just based off of those numbers, are not a prospect that you want to invest in. Their numbers will probably indicate that. Now there may be guys who have power, so you'll see that they have like... And it's not like you can have 40, 50 home run guys. Typically, you're looking around 15, 20 for a guy that hits a lot of home runs in the minor leagues. So you might see a guy that has 15, 20 home runs, but he strikes out every single time and he doesn't walk. So his on-base percentage is going to be really low. So maybe he doesn't have a great idea of what he's doing, but he's got raw power. Now, it may be something that you can go, all right, well, let's see if he progresses. Maybe I'll buy a card for, you know, maybe I can buy it on the cheap and you want to take that chance. Uh, and, and that's where you would like, you know, you take chances. Now, also, you can, you, you need to take a look at what other cards are going for. Um, it's typically by position. So if you're looking at outfielders, look at other outfielders and how much their cards are going for. So if you show a guy... Um, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, players, but I don't know the stats right now. So let's just say you have a, a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And that guy, his card is insane and he's worth a ton of money. So maybe, maybe that, that might not be a, a great uh, indication. Let's just say there's a guy who's a third baseman and his card, he is a top prospect. People really like him. His stats are, are really good in the minor leagues. He, he passes the sniff test for me on all the things that I just said. Um, and his card goes for $50. Let's just say there's a guy that is not as highly touted, but has very similar numbers than him. And he's just in maybe single A though, but he's had a year or maybe he's had two years, and he's actually gotten better or increased and is, has very similar stats, and you will see them. From there, you can go and check, and really, when you're investing in prospects, you're investing in Bauman cards. It's th Those are the cards that, that I suggest to, to look at. Um, usually, it's either Bauman, Chrome, uh, Bauman Draft, which is the cards that when someone is drafted, those are the cards they come out, and typically that's where you get a lot of the first Bauman cards. Um, and we're talking about Bauman Chrome autographs. Now you have the base, and then you have all the colored one, you know, colors. So you have um, the base auto, 499 auto, which is exactly the same as the base; it just says 499 on it. And then you have the it goes for purple. Um, just want to make sure I'm saying it. Purple, blue, green, which is 
which is 99. You have gold, which is 50. You have orange, that's 25. You have uh, red, that's five. And then you have a one of one. You also have a sparkle or a black card as well. And they're typically in the 70s range. Um, I don't know if every year they have the black one. I know they're starting with the sparkle one and that's becoming popular. So those are just some of the cards that they have. So I'm typically just talking about base autos. Um, color autos tend to be more money. Um, if you're looking, if you have a strict, you know, small budget of like $100, you can really do a decent amount of damage uh, buying cards for five to $10. So you can buy a lot more. Um, a lot of these guys, I would suggest looking at Comc and comc.com. They may be overpriced, some of them, but others are not. And then you'd be able to buy a whole bunch. And then when you're ready to ship, you can ship them all together and you save a ton of money on shipping. So if you're going to do this, I believe you should go on Comc. Now, not all the time do they sell these cards, you know, these prospects, but that's where I would start off first going. All right, so we identified a guy. He has very similar stats, and we see that his card is five bucks or ten dollars. So it looks like a deal. So that's when you pull the trigger and maybe buy one, two, or three cards. Bowman, and we're looking for their first Bowman Chrome. That's the card that you want. Is the first Bowman Chrome and also the rookie card, and that's when the rookie card is where they are. You know, they've made it to the majors and they're starting to play uh, Major League Baseball. You'll see the RC on the bottom. But at that point, it's almost too late. Almost. Not all the times, but it's almost too late. So, just to recap real quick, you're going to go to Fangraphs. You're going to look up the guy's stats. You're going to compare them to top guys. You're then going to go by position and check to see... Um, what card solds are going for and see if it's a good deal. You may have some guys that are going for 20 bucks. That's a prospect and you go, well, should I invest the $20? And the top guy is only 40 bucks or $45. And unless you think this guy's going to be a generational guy or maybe you're okay with you know, flipping it for double. That might be fine. Um, but I tend to go for the five to ten dollar cards, buy like three or four of them, and just wait. And, and, and that's the thing, it's a waiting game. You might be waiting a year or two. Um, some guys, and sometimes you're not. Sometimes guys have an awesome, like Nico Horner for the Cubs, he had an awesome spring, and his cards went crazy in value. Casey Mize is another guy. He was the first draft pick for the Detroit Tigers. He threw a no-hitter. His card went up a lot. So those are things that you need to take a look at as well. You have to pay attention a little bit. Um, it's not like the stock market with regards to you just, you know, keep on buying and then don't pay attention. There may be times when you can get out and double your money right away and reinvest in something else. Or maybe not. Maybe you go, no, I'm going to keep this card. You know, there's some people who buy like 10 of these cards, and if they double in value, sell five of them, got their money back, and now the other five is just for, you know, investment, and it's all gravy for them. There's no wrong way to go about it, but that's this is just what I do. Um, so, you got to, I believe if you control the strike zone and you have a good command and you know what's going on and you have some power and you have a record of it those are the guys to go for if you're getting on base a lot you have power maybe you have some speed there's no reason and you're doing this at each level but there's no reason why it shouldn't continue now there's some cases where it doesn't these guys just suck and they don't you know pan out and that's going to happen a lot but if you're just spending five or ten dollars a card, it's not going to kill you. Whereas if you go for these big prospects and you're spending fifty, eighty, a hundred dollars, you may run out of money right away. Um, so when you're starting out, that's just what I suggest you do. All right, guys. You know I am at my job right now, so I have to end the podcast. Thank you. Very
very much. If you have any other questions, hit me up, SVA Baseball Card Collectors, on my Facebook group, SVA BB Collectors, on Instagram. Um, I'm also on YouTube. Check me out, people. And you know what to do. My baseball cousin go broke. Later.